Hello and welcome to another episode of Educational. This is Roy. This is Terry. So we are chronicling <laughs> our journey through the aging process, hopefully uh, trying to make some substantial changes now so we can uh, have a better life as we as we do age. You know, we talk about not wanting to outlive our wellness for sure. We want to have a good, uh, consistent life with being within our within our mind, being able to think and also being able to move, uh, you know, nothing worse than having to have a serious illness and not being able to get out and do the things that you like to do. So anyway, we're talking a little bit about that. We also talk about uh, things that our parents are bumping up into, how we've solved them, new things that we figured out, try to bring a little bit of information so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, when it's time for you. And another thing is just to let you know that Other people are going through this too, so there's always a place to reach out for help. But uh, we also have guests on from time to time, and today is no different, and I'm going to let Terry introduce Carmen. Carmen DeValis is a consultant and photographer inspiring audiences around the world with humor and her compassionate way of telling stories with images. During her 40-year nursing career, she worked with thousands of people seeking meaning and connection during challenging times and continues to do so with her camera. She is an entrepreneur with two businesses, Carmen's Legacy Productions and Doggies for Dementia. She is an international speaker inspiring audiences using photography and storytelling and is an award-winning author of Just See Me, Sacred Stories from the Other Side of Dementia. Carmen is also an Alzheimer's dementia advocate and founder for, of Doggies for Dementia Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation using photography to capture family memories and raise awareness for Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. Doggies for Dementia has been featured on both NBC and ABC. Carmen, welcome to the show. We've been waiting for a long time to you. with you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I listened to that. I'm like, wow, 40 years. <laughs> that was a right? long time. Yeah. Well, and people are always like, oh my gosh, who is she talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it yeah. was you. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am. Yeah, 42 now. Mm-hmm. Well, tell us a well, little thank bit. Thank you so much. I just have to say it is such a pleasure to be here because I know we connected on Instagram and since then other social media and um, I love what you're doing and it's a treat. It's a treat to be here. Well, thanks. Uh, And that's what really attracted us to you was the, you know, we love dogs. We've got a couple and, and then the dementia aspect, you know, that's close to Terry's heart because she lost her dad to that, but also it's so prevalent now. And it's something that we don't want to think about. We don't really want to deal with it, but unfortunately sometimes we have to. And uh, so anyway, that and then um, I think the, you know, listening to the intro talking about the pictures, because, you know, that's something else that we try to advocate for is documentation of people's lives. Unfortunately, when people are gone, we realize how how not many pictures, how how little pictures we have and how much documentation writing what they did for living and who their parents were, what they like, you know, just there's so much about it. Yeah. So anyway, well, tell us a little bit from, uh, you know, how did you get here from nursing to, uh, you know, doggies for dementia and taking pictures? Sure. Yeah. I, um, so yeah, a lot of time as a nurse and a nurse practitioner, even so I, the last decade or so, even more than that was primarily, um, elderly, so 65 and older, though I don't consider that elderly, oh, but you know, 65 oh, and older. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> older every time, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I more and more of that, and I did house calls and, um, and some in long-term care communities and not everyone in long-term care community has d- dementia, of course, but I, 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 several of my clients did. And then I started to see more and more and I realized the families um, just had really unique uh, challenges. And I really wasn't ready to meet that. So I needed to learn. It. And uh, so we're talking even 10 or 15 years ago, and we've come a long way since then and early diagnosis and such. Um, but it, it got to then I, I, I worked with a geriatric psychiatrist, uh, dementia pr- primarily, and then in neurology. And uh, it was just, I just kept thinking, there's got to be more, there's got to be more. Uh, we can do. And I was um, quite with, um, I worked at Seton the very last part of my career. And they said, look, if you need 45 minutes for a visit, you need to help family take it, 
just block yourself, which was amazing, right? Yeah. In today's healthcare, just really right. unique and special. And and I did that when I needed to. And I just felt like, wow, um, there's just so much, so much to the stories. And I thought if if the world knew about what it was like for them, their triumphs and their challenges, uh, we would, there would be such less pettiness in the world. Yeah. And I didn't think most people knew because I thought I'm in this world and I didn't know a lot about it. How does anybody who's not in involved in it know? And um, so I, I thought, you know, I'm going to tell these stories. And I, I left to write a book, which I followed 13 families for about two and a half years. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I thought I can't do that without photos. And I was a hobbyist. I, I always had my camera with me. And it's funny, because I thought, what do I want to do? If I ever didn't do this, what would I do? And my camera is right around my neck. You know, I think, why, why did I not think of it? Because that's yeah. my great joy camera. Yeah. And um, what I realized in the, the photos, and I started putting on my social media with the families, you know, everybody knew and our mission was to raise awareness and to teach people with this through the stories and to for their legacy. And the ones with dogs always got the most attention. So people would stop and read the stories and learn because they were interested. Oh my gosh, look at the dog. What's that story about? And it, when it was people, it's like, da, okay, put a dog. <laughs> right, right. So I thought, oh, and then that, then I thought, well, why don't we then use that and meet the people where they're at and include dogs, which are the most fun sessions most of the time anyway, because it's candid and loving and joyful or whatever it might be, whatever the dog is doing and the interaction is natural. And that's how Doggies for Dementia came about. There was a good four or five years there, yeah. you know, and, and things that. No, that's uh, cool because yeah. that's a, a little bit why we started the show is because the, um, not knowing what you don't know until you're in the throes of usually a crisis. And that's, that's the not, you know, that's, it's hard to gather all the information that we have. It's just easier to make poor decisions. And so anyway, I, I think that's, um, that's a yeah. great mission because we, you know, we want to, that's again, talking about, you know, if somebody has been through this before. Yeah. If we can share that, it may save people some time. We still advocate, do your own research, but Another thing is start the conversation early. And then if you never have to imp put anything into action, then you can consider yourself one of the lucky ones. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's so much, uh, there's so many conversations to have wrapped around growing old, not just the dementia part. Yes. Yeah. And I think the world is a very lonely place when we feel like we're the only ones going yeah. through something. Yeah. And that was one of the common threads in all the family stories and in interviews was the isolation and loneliness. Right. And, and they felt because people didn't understand or know. And yeah. I thought, well, what if we change that? Yeah. What if we, you know, and, and I, I really started to think about the days and as I, even a younger nurse, but it wasn't that long ago, breast cancer wasn't something you even said out loud, right? You know, it was like, oh, female cancer, and you don't talk about it. And women struggled all by themselves. And um, that changed when people started sharing their stories and getting out there and said, well, yeah, this can be really difficult, but this can also be really beautiful. And this is what we're going to talk about. And it's changed yeah. dramatically. And I, and I hope I see that in my lifetime when it comes to Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, where the stigma and the isolation piece of it isn't something families are going through yeah. on top of everything else. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. do you, can you um, share a couple of stories from the Just See Me? Sure, cool. sure. So let me think. Well, I can tell you one. Um, G Judy is uh, both oh, yeah. my. She was in the in the book. Her family and um, they happen to be. Toward the end of my stay at uh, were patients of mine too, and her daughter was just like, I don't know what to do, and I'm not sure what to do. That she was just feeling so lost, and she was doing her best to care for her, both of her parents and herself, and and failing at her taking care of herself completely and getting sicker and sicker and. Um, when I left, I'm like, well, would you like to be part of the book? You know, and she goes, yes, I have so much to say about that. And um, so they were, their story was in the book and they live in a very small town out um, in the, in the country and her, Judy's grandparents actually helped build this church that's in this very small community, like one street. 
And so we did her photos there and that's where she grew up her whole life. And it was a big thing. And, and her daughter, um, Roxanne said to me, she goes, you know, I guess you should know, I haven't told anybody that my mom has dementia. We go to church and we're here, but nobody really knows that she has Alzheimer's. Oh. But when your book comes out, that's when they're going to find out. That's yeah. the oh. big reveal. That's the big reveal. And that's reveal. just, you know, you want, you think that you're protecting them by not telling mm -hmm. them, but I think people, more people know than you think, especially yeah. if exposed to them. Oh uh, yeah. Just maybe Some more not surprised. as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just her daughter needed that support and, uh, yeah. And she just wasn't sure how people were going to react to what was going to happen. And no. there was a great deal of fear there. And uh, so when it came for the doggies for dementia, she said, you know, my niece has this dog and someone with the underbite, um, Molly. And I, and I, she said, oh, it's a puppy, a puppy who was very calm puppy. <laughs> and um, it was just a sweet AQV. They were like giving each other the side looks, you know, and like, I don't know what you're doing here. And I don't know what you're doing here. And it was um <laughs> It was really sweet and, and they loved carrying on their mother's legacy and the certain grandmother and the stories and that she was honored in a really beautiful way. Uh -huh. um, that uh -huh. was a real treat for her family and That's her great. grandchildren. And, and how did the community react? I mean, did they respond? Yeah. Yeah. Differently than she expected or I, I guess you can't really expect. You know, yeah, I, you know, um, and she learned to ask for help that she needed yeah. and that that was okay because I, I think she felt like people weren't going to understand why she needed the help and well, what's wrong with you? Why can't you take care of your two teenage kids and your father and be a wife and run the ranch and take care of your mother too? You know, right. <laughs> like, well, that's a well, lot anyway. And then you add Alzheimer's, so the community has rallied and her family oh. supports the, uh, Oh, I can imagine, especially with, with, uh, her, her mother growing up there or her grandmother growing up. It was it a wait, grandmother, or mother, it, it was her mother. Her yeah. Mother. Roxanne's mother is Judy. And yeah, she was, okay. our, yeah. well, and it's kind of because we don't understand it a lot. You know, I, I, one, one note I just jotted down was that sometimes we don't want to see what can happen to us. And so once people find out their friend has it, sometimes they can actually pull away for right. two reasons. I think number one, because you don't know how to act instead of just acting mm -hmm. like you always have, we think we got to say the right thing or do this thing, mm -hmm. but really just that love and being close is really what they need. And then also sometimes we don't want to see our future. And so it scares people yeah. that it's like, mm -hmm. oof, I, you know, I can't be around it because it frightens me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the most moving story that had to do with that was David and Joan, and I had seen him a few times in the office too, but I didn't know them well, and I had gone to their house to do this interview, and Joan meet, then David is, uh, was a journalist and um, lost his ability to speak. He, we thought he could understand pretty well, but he couldn't express himself or write, and which just had to be terrible for someone who's a journalist you know right. and and his wife and they're just both brilliant and she answers the door and I've got my stuff you know and I'm excited about for the book and, and she goes I know you think you're going to write another fluff piece here but I'm going to tell you I'm going to be real about how this is and she really kind of let me have it and and then she da, 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 and, and she and she goes so you're going to leave now and I'm like no I'm really here for the truth let's talk about this and right. She was really one of the first ones that was brutally honest about the impact of the uh, people, as you talked about, who said, well, I, I want to remember him the way he was, right. so I'm not going to, or I'm not sure what to say. I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing, so I'm not going to come over, and their friends just, just physically moved away, you know, and and it was so painful for both of them who had been very social and um, active in their community, and she described it in such a way that in fact, their story is the one most people will contact me about that. Hmm. Um, and, you know, of course, if I, I followed up and it all came out, you know, she's like, I can't believe you actually came in after that conversation <laughs> on the porch. They're like, oh, that's really what we wanted to have, you yeah, know, and, right. and um, you know, I just love their so. And, and, and I thought, you know, I appreciate it that, yeah. The candor and, her, and it was so raw their pain and and he wasn't able to express himself but you could see it in his face yeah and i thought how how would that be yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I love that story. It's making yeah. me tear up just thinking and, about it. Yeah. Well, and he could play harmonica. So his dog <laughs> Luna, when he played harmonica, Luna would howl along or, oh. or something. And so they were one of the first with a dog in the image because Luna just showed up and was singing along. And I thought, well, I got interesting. That. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah is- so there are no you know there's no coincidences that was just yeah. well yeah. And again it's um we feel the way we feel and so again letting other people know that it's okay you have to work through this it's not always going to be you know that happy story that we would love it to be but again here are some things that maybe you can do to navigate that situation so i i think those are probably as helpful to people that are, you know, starting the dementia journey than anything. Yeah. Yeah. It is hard. It is hard. There's more stuff. There's more resources, but it just doesn't make it that it's going to be an easy journey. It's a lot of learning. There's more noise. I mean, there's just (laughs) so much more. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing we've noticed on Instagram, and we've actually had a a couple, we've got had one on, and I think we've got one coming up but um caregivers and this one the one we talked to happened to be a grandchild who is caring for grandma and what really struck us about her was one where uh, she had a treadmill in the room and then you could see grandmother over kind of to the right of the picture sitting in a chair with her bowl of cereal and she was just saying you know trying to talk about keeping your days normal and you know how to work through it so she had figured out she could set grandma over there and eat her cereal while she was doing her walking or running and so you know those are uh i think that's another great thing is people are starting to put more of these out on social media for the public to see that you know what it it may not be the same as normal but it's going to be a new normal and you can figure out ways to overcome some of these hurdles that we're going to run Mm -hmm. and you don't know where the help could come from i mean you could get help from that just sharing your story Mm -hmm. trying being accountable and you just never know who is going to be touched by which part of your story that's right and that's what i love about doggies for dementia and oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a dog lover too. So oh, for me, yeah. it's like a natural and people are thinking that my dog Sparky is going to be the one in their pictures and like, well, I'm not the best mom, uh, dog, mom doggy, a dog mommy, you know, um, yeah, ours that well so much energy so. that's same as ours. And I have to tell you, I have been, I mean, ever since I can remember, we always had dogs growing up and, um, I, I always went and found, went through the want, want ads, circle, circled them, went and bought a puppy. You know, I, I would go and buy a little puppy and bring it home and say that it followed me in the park. There's no way I could leave it. It was raining. I couldn't do it. So I would always find an, a reason to go and get another dog. I could never have too many, you know, yes. and some of them we had to, um, you know, rehome to, <laughs> to other children who didn't have dogs. That's how my mom would explain it <laughs> after she yelled at me for bringing another one. But yeah, um, yeah and yeah. dad, and I have to tell you, dad would be, oh, mm, you shouldn't be doing that, you know, just behind mom going, yes, yes, yes. And then who's, who's lap, whose lap is the dog in? Every time I come home, I came home, you know, mm-hmm. that's exactly how it was. And he, he would have a dog in his lap and he would be holding a bone for him to chew on mm-hmm. in his lap, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Partner. I, w- I wonder sometimes if dogs don't sense like who needs me most today, who yeah. needs the most love today. And that's where they're going. And they're just all over that. And I think um, you're right. Yeah. Well, yeah. my um, my stepfather is starting to suffer from dementia. And it's funny because, you know, you're from Texas too. So you remember uh, the February freeze out, you know, we were, we were without <laughs> power for about a week. Yes, and so true. luckily we stayed at my, my mom and stepdad's and uh, they, they never lost power. So we were very lucky, but we had the two dogs and, you know, we were concerned about they're not little dogs. They're big dogs and they're, plus. they're very uh, personal. They want to get in your space and <laughs> jump on you and love you and all that, which is cool for us. But, you know, we were worried about how they were going to interact. Yeah. And he, I don't, I don't know that he'd ever had, they had never had dogs that I can remember, but it was amazing because he was so fascinated by them he that really he was. couldn't, 
he, that's all he could focus on was, do they get along? Do they eat to, you know, just all of these questions. And then even for, you know, maybe a month after that was over, every time we would see them, he'd always ask how the dogs, you know, and so we took him over there a couple of times just so he could see them. But um, it was an interesting interaction and result of something that I, I, I didn't think it was going to go that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, people often ask, do, do I supply the dogs? Do we supply the dog? Do we? Yeah. Like, no, that's a family's. It has to be a familiar dog of some sort because you just don't know how it would go otherwise. So right. there's got to be some familiarity. Um, but the other piece of it, even then, you just don't know how it's going to go or what's right. going to be of interest. And that alone is intriguing because yeah. it's, it's, uh, there are no expectations, which is a real blessing, by the way, for the people with dementia as well. They don't have, nobody's looking for them to do anything but how they are, um, which especially in earlier stages, there's some pressure there that people are watching me, or am I going to say the wrong right. thing? Or, and, and families might feel that way when someone else is present, like, or, you know, what's going to happen and which is probably the good thing that I have that experience. And like, it doesn't, nothing's going to, nothing's going to surprise yeah, me. Right. It's okay. I, I get it. That's <laughs> just how it is. This is your place to be you. And, and when you add a dog to that mix, it's just like, um, it's just this, it's, it's like the perfect moments for me. And people will say like, do you always smile? I'm like, you know, it's like my camera's in my hand. I'm always smiling. It is just it for me. Like, yeah, so did you, notice, <laughs> did you notice any, um, any behaviors of the dogs or the people? Because I didn't know if the, if the dog can sense that the person is sick, if the dog stays very close to them and is like always right with them or did the, do they maybe move away or did you notice any, have you noticed anything about like that? No, not so much. Um, I mean, obviously we're setting it up. Um, we let what happens happen, but we're setting it up in a location and I've got the lights, you know, continuous lights and so no flashes. And we let everybody get used to the lights and me being there and pretty soon they forget I'm there. Cause then they're just, you know, playful and, being what they are. You know, I, I've observed that at other times, but not, not for the shoot so much. Um, there, um, it's just that it's, there's their interaction, which is unique all right. to all of them. Yeah. I know my dog did. I was sick. <laughs> um, the beginning of the pandemic, I was diagnosed with cancer and I'm pretty oh. sure my dogs knew before yeah. I even new. Yeah. And I thought they are so clingy. They just won't yeah. leave me alone. And like, I'm tripping over them. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I, I really think they sense something that's not yeah. right. I have heard that before that, um, mm-hmm. they, yeah. they can sense, uh, there are some dogs that are very sensitive to some forms of cancer. And then also it's not a dog, but it's a cat. I'm not a big cat person don't i mean not that i dislike i'm just more of a dog person they're just more independent but, <laughs> but there was a a nursing home that had a cat and this cat would go to the person who was dying and curl up with them and so they they would usually give like a two to three days to a week notice that you know this person is going to pass uh-huh. you know? so then everybody the people who were healthy or got nervous every time they saw that cat coming down the hall, thinking, hope it's not stopping in my room. <laughs> yeah, me. Keep right. that cat away from me. That's right. Yeah. 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 And I, I guess that's a really good question. Cause I'm thinking I, I, you know, we set up, we know the dogs were familiar with everyone that we were able to do sessions with. Yeah. Um, but it did seem that even puppies were really subdued and, or not wild puppies around the person with dementia yeah. they were with. It was like, there was a connection there, which yeah. is what I was talking about with Judy. They just kind of like give each other side eye. Like, I don't know what this is about, but we're, yeah. you know, we're here. And uh, some of the looks at each other were just like identical to one another. I don't know if mirroring or what, but. That's the awesome That's thing cool. about dogs though, is I, you know, I was thinking again, leading up to this, I've just been thinking a lot about, you know, the dogs, our dogs, they never have a bad day. They're yeah. always, and they're always happy to see you, you know, no matter how you feel, they're yeah. always there. And it, and, uh, you know, I guess it goes with that emotional support mechanism that a lot of people have animals for, but how can you be upset or not feel good 
when you have this animal that just can't give you enough love. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's also so mm-hmm. unconditional. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you, Carmen, how is your health now? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I had surgery and recovered and I'm, I'm, you know, thankfully it was like oh. the best of the worst. So, yes. but during a pandemic of all this, I'm like, oh my God, oh, I, I can't did. work. I, I'm sick. Yes. I'm by myself at the time. I'm like, oh my goodness. And my dogs were just such good, uh, company for me, uh, during, during that time oh, well all the time but it def- yeah, definitely yeah. during that time I thought I don't know what I would do if I didn't have my dogs right. oh, I'm so on glad lockdown when for other people I knew who lived alone during the lockdown I thought oh and I saw people getting dogs I thought go good for you because yeah, right. it really means a lot mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um and then I was going to also ask you um you just pretty recently got a, it received a donation for doggies for dementia, the foundation, correct? Yeah. Well, we have ongoing fundraisers yes. here and there. We, um, Shields, which is a large depart, um, no, department, sorry, a sporting good, um, store, I guess they're really huge in the Midwest and now they're, they're in Dallas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, I have never seen anything so huge in my life. And <laughs> yeah, so we've got a wonderful donation from them and some recognition and things, which, which we, you know, we were thrilled about. So that is so yeah. cool. That yeah. is, yes, and that's yeah. great. Congratulations. Yeah, and, and, you know, we, um, you know, the, the, the beauty of social media, you know, I know there's a lot of bad <laughs> people will talk. I personally, it has connected me to people all around the world, even more than ever before. And we get donations and comments and, and um, just beautiful um, letters from people from everywhere, just from everywhere. And, um, so small or big, we, each one is like when we have our board meetings and we go through it, you know, it just really touches our hearts. Yeah. Oh. Like, yeah. I was, I was looking in your background. You've got some pictures I see, but also it looks like a painting. Do you <laughs> as well? I don't. You know? Yes, see, this is, yeah. I met um, a gal on Instagram okay. and um, it's art for alls with the four. And she, uh, it was raising money for the walk that she does in honor of her grandmother who had Alzheimer's and during the uh, lockdown and all, she has, I think a four or five-year-old son. He might be a little older, but he's around that age. And she's like, what do we do? You know, they're, they're in board and she had never painted before and they started painting things. And then she sells them on Instagram for like $25, these hand painted um, pieces that she and her son made to help raise money for her walk. And I saw the dog and I thought, oh, well, I know where that needs to go. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I met her and we did a little program and yeah, it's, it's just, just one of those really beautiful things. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, so no, I don't paint. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. No, I just saw it was surrounded by the photos. So I yeah. wasn't sure. Yeah. So what's next for doggies for dementia? I mean, where, where are you hoping to, uh, to grow, take this? What's the future look like? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the pandemic has hit us really hard. We yeah. really needed to, so from going, because our population is vulnerable to go and do photographs was out of the question with, right. especially in long-term care communities. Um, we could still go to people's homes, of course, and we do those, uh, but for long-term care, but even that was super careful. And um, so we kind of, we looked at our mission and said it's about raising awareness and we have a YouTube channel that we're doing um, programs and our blogs and things. And so for us, that we're anxious to get out and start telling stories again and, and meeting people and doing the photographs. Um, And also as things open, we're looking to train other photographers around the country who'd like to be a part of this, to be a part of the Doggies for Dementia group and to uh, take that to their communities as well. As much as I love to travel, I can't be everywhere. And um, yeah, and uh, I I think that is our next uh, big thing is to start adding some volunteer photographers. Now I'm going to begin in Texas. We're going to be getting close and, you know, and, and grow slowly as we do, but um, that, and that's. Do you yeah. already have, have photographers in other states as well, or is it just in Texas for now? 
Yeah, you know, we are, as far as a nonprofit is concerned, I did the paperwork for this in March of 2020. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. I am so, not rushing you. <laughs> yeah. So, about no, 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 it was like three weeks or two weeks before the lockdown. Wow. You know, was, we had been working on it, filed the papers. And then the lockdown things happened. Oh my gosh. And so a lot of our plans, um, and I had done shoots before that. It was part of Doggies for Dreaming. We were an official um, nonprofit, although I did it under my for-profit business, but always free for families as it is now. It's always free for families. And um, I was funding it, but we just officially made it a, a nonprofit. And then the lockdown and, yeah. and you know, we want to protect our our people and we, we want people to be safe. And so, uh, yeah. And so even if, um, we have some people who are interested, but we've got to have practice sessions and people you know, right out there. Yeah. And, um, I have, I think three different communities that are all signed up and ready for September, October sessions, especially for Alzheimer's awareness, which I'm thrilled about. Yes. And then we have the increasing numbers. So I don't even think those are going to happen. You know, that's been a double-edged sword for, um, I think for seniors, all seniors, (laughs) and then those with dementia is that, you know, they are vulnerable. We don't want to, you know, bring the outside germs into them or virus or however, but again, that loneliness is so devastating yeah. for them as well that, I, you know, it, I, it really does my heart good to see these families that have found creative ways to, you know, be outside the window right. and go see their, yeah. their loved ones. And so we really need to think outside the box, you know, yeah. if this is going to get bad again, how we can continue to have some kind of a human contact, maybe not contact, but human interaction through a glass or whatever. And it's a great thing about, you know, not if the pandemic had to happen, now is an awesome time because we have technology. Right. So mm-hmm. at least if the, the seniors can make the uh, can FaceTime work, that's or great. Yeah. Or, you know, staff can help them do the FaceTime work and at least see people and, and have a little bit of interaction. And I saw one community that they had gone out and bought a bunch of uh, orchestra music holder stands and then a bunch of uh, iPads. And so they would take, they'd all get it all set up and then take that and set it by the, you know, senior where they could interact with their family. So a lot of creative ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, it has brought up some huge, um, oh, a crisis actually, and really made a stop and look, how do These are what we say we value and how do we carry through on our values and how we care for um, our senior citizens in in the United States. And it's really across the world, but I'll I'll talk about what I know. And um, looking at the, do we primarily focus on the physical health only and the protection and isolation and and this, when we saw people, and, and I can tell you like Carol, the pictures behind me is vibrant. She's, you know, 90 something and we celebrated her birthday and the isolation it just, just caused such a, a decline that um, unbelievable and quickly. And, and so we're recognizing that, Hey, maybe we need to think about emotional health too, right, which right. we always said we valued, but then you, how, what do we do? And who knew? Because this was a new, you know, uh, who thought we would have a pandemic and all of these things. And um, so, you know, not looking at blaming, it's like, okay, now we got to really think, and you're right about that. Now we got to really think about where our values, how are we going to manage this and how do we take care of people in a holistic way that their emotional needs and family needs and physical safety and where, where's that going to be and who's going to determine that? Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, yeah. who would have ever thought it would have gone, you know, cause in March of 2020, I think everybody fully expected that, you know, it was going to be bad through the summer, but then by, you know, the fall, it was going to yeah. be better. But then, you know, as we started getting through April and May, then people realized, Oh, not going to be over that. And then now we've got this new variant that's out there. So it's like, well, how, you know, and I don't know and about one. everywhere, but like yeah. our numbers here in DFW are, skyrocketing and they wow. expect that the younger kids uh to actually surpass the peaks that we had you know at the fall of last year 
so anyway, you know, it's yeah. like then how many more variants are going to come along? And so I guess at some point we have to say maybe this is the new normal, even though we don't like it and wouldn't want it. So we got to figure out those ways to, you know, mm -hmm. take care of everybody. Yeah. And, you know, we're a society that has really never, never had to face any kind of pandemic plague anything so the our thought is well typically you get sick you take a pill and then you're back to normal yes, and everything's right. back to normal but um it's different than that and it's going to require a whole shift in mindset and like yeah. oh okay this is what uh needs to happen and this is and then readjust and yeah. um you know i know families are many families are very involved in um movements to change what's con who's considered primary um, caregivers who can for especially for long-term care because many didn't see their families for their loved one for like six yes. months yeah yeah and they were watching through the window and literally not not to be i don't want to go on all to the negative side here but some only saw their loved one they said we're given a choice you can see them now or um they're declining you can see them um like shortly before their death yeah. And I mean, like shortly before, like yeah. hours, they had to make a choice. Yeah. yeah. And you I can't I, do both because no. we can't let you in twice. And do you remember, yeah. um, I think, it, I think her name was Mary Daniel, where she, her husband was in a facility and yes. she ended up, uh, you know, a professional, yeah. many, very educated, mm -hmm. ended up getting a job um, in the kitchen of oh the gosh. facility Never just so that. she could visit her husband. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, and she formed a group. It was Caregivers for Compromise, I believe. Yes, family. Yeah, and uh, then it, every state it was a one group, and then there were so many people. Each state has their own. And I went to the Texas group one to hear about it and to record their stories. That's our mission too. Right. I'm like, let me hear your story. So I kept a distance. We're at the courthouse, and I I walked away a changed person because I did not know what it was like for some of the families and because it was such a it's such an unknown how to handle it do the local communities do they listen to a corporate do they listen to cdc is it the state guidelines or is it the federal guidelines who are they supposed to how are they and so you might one day go down the street and they have different roles than the one on right. um, you know, so it's kind of like, okay, when we know better, we'll do better. And my families are really taking uh, really some strong action to, um, and she's, and she's quite, she's quite vocal, by the way. She's um, at the forefront. She mm -hmm. certainly is. I yes. enjoy seeing all mm -hmm. of, I mean, not enjoy, but I mean, I enjoy learning about everything that she's, oh. she's trying to lobby for and all the yeah. changes she's trying to make. I think absolutely. It's awesome. Yeah. They um, really inspiration. Yes. I read the stories. I listened. I'm like, oh my gosh. I know. Yeah. I meant to ask you before we started if it would be okay to ask you this question, but since we're already in the throes, uh -oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh -oh. if, you, if you choose not to respond, I definitely understand that. But uh, you know, Terry did some research on this new Alzheimer's I do treatment. Own. I do own. and some stuff that's come out since then not been um not been uh, uh supportive let's put it that way anyway i just thought you know since you were a nurse practitioner and you've got the medical uh yeah. side to look at this and do would you mind sharing your opinion with us sure i don't i will say i um uh, i have a good friend who has early onset alzheimer's and he and his dog buddy were part of our photo and he lives in New Jersey and um, Jeff Borkoff and he's been an Alzheimer's Association, uh, one of their advocates and things. And uh, when I visited he, his wife and, and he, so it's been, he's been in the trial program. So I wanna say it's been almost, almost two years then I was there. So well before this time in the trials and for them, he's, I think, 56, 57 at the time, oh, wow. and his wife is um, a little younger, and she's, you know, actively working, and uh, their life has changed dramatically, yeah. and the, the hope that was put into the trial and the drug that it would make a difference was beyond words and what it meant 
And so sometimes, you know, they're wondering, like, I don't know if it's helping. Maybe it is. We don't know what would happen if it wasn't, you know, if, it, if he wasn't taking. Right, but he right. continued on the trials. And and so knowing that and then watching and, and knowing when they stopped the drug trials, what that meant to them and then continued. And what I know about it scientifically is very little, okay. uh, very little. I'll just say that. <laughs> so yeah. I kind of hung up my white coat and, yeah. you know, I, I read things and see, I don't really have a strong opinion about that, but what I do know is the emotions that, and the, and the people's lives that yeah. are riding on this, yeah. this drug, as well as some others, but this one in particular, and when I read that this has changed or that has changed, I'm just thinking about what is that like sitting at the table, drinking coffee with them and yeah. hearing this. And I think you're yeah. right there. I've, I've always felt like that was why the big effort was to push it through was not, not that we, not that it would or wouldn't work necessarily. There was a hope that it would work mm -hmm. and bringing hope to people is sometimes, uh, you know, that that's a huge impact. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know. It's like everything else. If you have this positive aspect of even when you're ill, maybe you don't get cured, but maybe you live a better life of what you have. And so I think that's an, that is one aspect of this yeah. that you really can't put a dollar sign on. But um, then the other part of that is the false hope. You know, are we giving people false hope? And I don't know. It was just bizarre the way, you know, what little we know about it. And we haven't really followed up the last month or so, but with the yeah. committee, I think most of the committee that was involved that said, no, we don't want it. You know, they've all resigned and it's just, a, it's a, it was kind of a, an odd situation to have so much turmoil in a regulatory agency yeah. about uh, brought a lot of light. Yeah. Oh, sort yeah. Of a a <laughs> little light into the FDA and their processes and procedures and everybody kind of gears it toward whichever outcome that they're hoping for. And maybe it's run, you know, a big pharma mm -hmm. thing. So it's like, oh, so confused. Yeah. But it as is, it's so confusing. And, and I'll yeah. just even say as a nurse practitioner, what I do know when I'm faced with famines and go, what can we do? We had medicines we thought might slow it down, but not for everybody. Right. And and I'd say now they're going, how are we going to know that it helps if it's meant to slow it down and not make it better? Right. And like, because for some people they might make it better, but not all. And I didn't want to say, yes, it's going to make it better. Cause I can't, I can't guarantee that at all. I can't even, right. I don't, that was like a unusual, <clears throat> more unusual. And so I say, look, this is the best we have. This yeah. is the best we have right now. We think it can help. It's worth a try. And if there's um, any bad, you know, if there's interact, if they don't do well with it, clearly we stop it. Yeah. Right. And then they say, well, in a year or two, how do we know if it, and sometimes if we stop it, they get worse again, but we don't know who that's going to happen to. It's horribly cruel. Yeah. It's it, horribly cruel. And yeah. they're like, well, do I stop it and let nature take its course? Are they going to get worse right away? Like, well, maybe. So yeah. that's the reality of what we do have. Yeah. Yeah. Approved. Right. And, 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 and I Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, I was going to say that is what we do know. And so when I'm hearing this other things, I'm like, that's not that much different than what we already do know. And we're yeah. telling people, we really hope it helps, but we don't know. Yeah. But we're not sure. <clears throat> yeah, there's but no- it's all we got. It's yeah. all we've got. And that's all they have to look forward to. It's like, if I don't have, if, if I take it now and it helps, then maybe I'll have a better, a longer life with my family. And we're talking sometimes people in their forties and fifties here. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. Where dead. they'd say like, yeah, I'm willing to take the chance. Yeah. I'll take the chance. And if it doesn't work, well, that I, at least I tried. Yeah. You don't have any, other, you just don't have any other options. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. My, my dad, we lost him in 2014 and he's, he suffered from it. It was dementia, Pick's disease, dementia. Oh. So, um, he was on Aricept for many years and it seemed to help for a while, but I, if he were around now, I, his, his daughter would say, whatever it takes, there is no other option. I mean, there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. If he takes it, maybe it helps him. Maybe it speeds up the process, whatever. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, then definitely nothing's going to happen. I mean, he's going to continue to progress with this disease. Right. And he's, right. he's going to pass away without any other option available mm -hmm. to him. So yeah. I, I would be grasping at straws, you yeah. know, wanting to, to him to 
do whatever necessary to keep them around selfishly, you know? Of course. Yeah. And, and I think again, because we are a society, if we take a pill and it makes it better. Yes. And this is not the case uh, with dementia yet. We don't have that. I don't think that's a common knowledge for the general public unless you've experienced it. What it's like to have nothing, no hope at all until right. there's a little right. bit of hope. And then, yeah, and, and I think a message maybe to younger people is to <laughs> clean, clean up your lifestyle, make some changes. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah. not that you know, I, I don't know. There's, um, I think I'm not sure if they've ever really come down on, you know, hereditary versus lifestyle, but I do know that there are a lot of things that we can control that, you know, there's one that some research I've done years ago was that a lot of this Alzheimer's became, uh, more prevalent after the low fat diet craze of the seventies. And that, you know, maybe the fat of, read some research and actually went and heard a presentation about, uh, you know, coconut oil and the use of that trying to, you know, we've cut out so much of the fat that that's one thing that supposedly, mm -hmm. uh, I guess protects your brain. Yeah. The fat. That's the right fat that you need. The omega mm -hmm. sixes and threes and nines and all of that. So if we yes. can get the younger people to start eating, you know, more organically and mm -hmm. for brain health, gut health, all of that, instead of yeah. eating the processed everything and moving, exercising. And moving. Some. Yeah. Yeah. So hard yeah, to there's, do. Um, there's a psychologist. I've had a few interviews with on our program who um, works with people with mild cognitive impairment quite a bit. And, and just for people who are aging and he's just like, well, healthy body, healthy mind to start with. Right. Yes. And so the, yes, the moving, the socialization, you know, the, um, healthy eating, it's the whole, again, that whole All of it, holistic, yeah. uh, that because what happens in the body happens in the brain yeah. and vice versa. And so I was kind of like, okay, yeah. that at least can, um, it, it can help you can help our bodies resist yeah. disease sleep disease. sleep is important as yes. well i think that disease. terry did turn up a study a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. about the uh, sleep deprived and you know what how that stress. raises our chances stress. as well that. yeah so stress. Mm -hmm. and that you know and and so many people and probably some of your listeners are in that sandwich generation and similar to to roxanne i was talking about caring for their children and their parents yes. right, and themselves yeah. And the ones that usually get left out are themselves. Yeah. Again, oh, sure. we'll do another yeah. message for the uh, caregivers is that is so important for them because there used to be a, there was a study at one time that said uh, for those that are, you know, some of the worst dementia patients, their caregivers will die 80% of the time before the actual dementia patient will die or their wow. loved one. So that gets back to self-care. And, uh, you know, we, there are great respite programs. There are people that are willing to help, but you have to know it's out there and you have to be, you have to understand if you're not here, who is going to take care of your loved one. So that mm -hmm. should be some motivation to, you know, really focus on self-care where you can take the best care of your loved one as possible. Yeah. And it's a challenging thing. And for a yeah. lot of people, it's learning self-care anew. Yes. Time they've really, never really it, thought about it. Oh, like, right. no. yeah. too, especially women. They're like, what? I, oh, no. Right. And like, yeah, this is really hard. And, and it's like, you know, like, how do you be a daughter to your mother when you really are more of a mother? You do, you have to be more motherly and is that 24 seven and it's, it's, a, it's a constant thing. And, uh, while you're caring for your children and, and yourself. Yeah. 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 And it's not self, I, I mean, it's, it's so not selfish to take right. care of yourself. You have to reframe yourself to think, okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's not the guilt part of it. I mean, it's not that we're trying to guilt you and, but whatever works. I mean, if you need yeah. to be guilted into it, take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know it's a, I, I traveled with a friend of mine who spoke and he early onset Alzheimer's is younger than me. And when we would, we had like two or three places in a row. So I was there and I was you know, like caring for him, but he did really well, but there were times he wasn't. Right. And I remember one afternoon, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to kick myself forever saying to people, you got to take good care of yourself, even take five minutes, because right. I didn't even have five minutes to take care. Yeah. 
and that it's it was tough. like th there was something happening like if All I the time. went to take a shower I heard like the co oh, what happened to the coffee and you know like well you should have bought me the kind of coffee maker I'm used to and I had just done that and that was it you know and it's oh, yeah. it was just it was just and then the next day it's like oh I don't know what you're talking about like, yeah no. You know, but I got it. And I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh this there it is. is not easy. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thanks for that digression. I know, uh, you know, it's just good to get, get your opinion as well. Uh, you know, since you're out there working with a lot of people with dementia and their families. So thank you for yeah. digressing yeah. with us and giving us your <laughs> opinions there. All right. Well, a uh, couple things. Um, what is a tool or a habit? What is something that you do every day that you feel adds a lot of value to your life? Hmm. Well, I know it seems kind of funny because it's what I do for a living too, but for me to go out in nature and photograph, just walk, see the flowers, I get down on the ground, I look at all different angles. To me, I can lose hours and it doesn't even seem like it. And I'm um, just kind of one with the bees and you know, never been stung. I've been surrounded. And is that to me is just, uh, yeah, the most peaceful thing. And, yeah. and my dog Sparky, of course. Yeah. Yes. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's funny Attitude. because, um, you know, we moved out to a very unique place a year, a few years ago now. And, uh, you know, Terry is not a pioneer woman and I don't think she minds me saying <laughs> that out like loud, bugs. but, uh, <laughs> It is amazing just the quality of life because, you know, we, she has a little herd of deer that I she do. takes care of. And we've got a family of raccoons that come out at night and go to the feeder and try to eat the corn, Steal the deer but, feed. you know, armadillos, <laughs> all this stuff. And it's just amazing to be able to step out and just enjoy the world that is around us. Just for sure. A deep breath, just yes. inhaling yeah. and exhaling yeah. and yeah. the trees, not the snakes, not still not fans of those. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's where I draw the line on the snake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wear my boots and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm I guess I am a flip flop yeah. girl. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it is, it, it, it has made a huge difference. Just being out here, the stillness, the sounds, the, the smells, the, I mean, just everything yeah. has just made a huge difference. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a, come on, come yeah. on. <laughs> We're not that far. <laughs> yeah. We will be headed that way soon. Yeah. <laughs> right. Very soon. Yeah. All right, Carmen. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, doggies for dementia and then tell us also about the photography and, uh, you know, what you do, who you like to work with, how you can help. And of course, how they can reach out. Yeah and get a hold of you. And also the foundation, oh. just tell us, tell us a little bit about everything you got going on. Okay. That's a lot, right? <laughs> Another hour right there. <laughs> yeah. I would just say, um, so definitely for families that are impacted by dementia, the doggies for dementia program, it's a, we do actually for most it's two photo sessions, one with the dog and it, that might be I mean, I take my time to make sure everybody's comfortable and there's no hurry, no worry. And we go with it, how it goes. Yeah. And, um, and then I usually come back a week or two later and show those photos and we have a video slideshow. So I have a couple cameras going on, including the one I have in my hand and a video camera over my shoulder, uh, because I realize that people say the most amazing things when I'm taking still pictures. <laughs> so I just have it going all the time. Yeah. And, um, that is often a real huge highlight for people to have, and especially as time goes on and their loved ones no longer there to yeah. have their voice and the, the video and things. And, um, you know, there's never a charge for families. Uh, we, our goal is for our videos and our images to go viral. We want that. We want the world to understand dementia and to hear the story and to honor their loved ones. And so that's, you know, the only piece of that. And we're very flexible. I, I've gone all over Texas and I'm even going to make in Georgia in um, another month um, to do a shoot there. So it's really uh, just kind of depends. And um, my husband and I were just like, well, let's go, let's just go. And, uh, and so I'm vaccinated. I always wear a mask and we're quite careful. We keep our distance and uh, um, knowing it's more difficult in communities, but it depends, but certainly in people's homes we do. Um, can do that. Uh, so that's the doggies for dementia. 
Uh, we don't ask families even to donate or to, we really want to honor their loved one in that way. If they wish to, they can, but there's really, well, there's really no expectation there. Uh, we're funded by donations and sponsorships of um, companies, businesses that love the idea and want to help um, fund that. And so we're always open to that. Um, that's the piece for doggies for dementia and the nonprofit. Um, I phone, so let's say a family says we would love to do this with my my mom or my dad or who, whoever it might be, but we really don't want that be really public. I do that under my for profit business Carmen's Legacy Productions, and there's special pricing for uh, families impacted by dementia, so they can still do it. And we don't we don't go public. It's 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 our it's our thing, and it's just as beautiful. It's just we're not. Um, it's just not part of the. Uh, social media and things. Okay. Okay. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And yeah. your website is uh, doggiesfordementia.org. Mm -hmm. Doggiesfordementia.org. And we're on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And it's under Carmen DeVelas on LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter is Doggies for Dementia. I don't do a lot with Twitter, so I don't talk about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a YouTube, um, a video blog. We call it Experts Dig In with Doggies for Dementia. So oh, we talk, in fact, you guys need to be our guest too. So we talk about people doing amazing things and um, to help uh, families uh, for for some um, information for family, family caregivers and and others impacted by dementia. So all different walks of life, including oh, okay. families, okay. a lot of families. Mm -hmm. And you have, I noticed behind you, you have one of your, well, you have a couple of books. Do you want to hold one of, you want to hold them up? Well, I can, sure. Um, yeah. So Just this is, yeah, this is the one I say I left my nursing career for, <laughs> although I continue to heal only, you know, with the camera. And so this one has um, 13 different stories, unique stories. And, you know, when I thought I'm like 13 families, I imagine I'm going to hear a lot of the same. And I, I didn't. And what I realized and what how the name came about then was um, I'm sitting there in my living room with 13 piles of paper and the audio tapes. And I'm like, how do these or how are we connected other than dementia? Uh, because I really didn't want it to be all about dementia. I wanted it to be about challenges and triumphs and what are people doing? And uh it, and then it just happened to be dementia was that one common thread. And, and then I realized I'm like, there were 13 different spiritual needs. We have spiritual, basic spiritual needs that we have similar to our physical and emotional needs and spiritual needs. And each one had like a crisis of that spiritual need that they work through to resolve. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And that was my master's was in spirituality and healthcare and why it took me so long to see that as I'm sitting there and I thought, yeah. oh my gosh, this is like one, two, three, all. And, and that's how it came about and why I named it the sacred stories oh from the God. other side of dementia. Yeah. That gives yeah. me goose bumps. Mm -hmm. And it all, it, it just always comes full circle, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. it's like, hello, yeah, I got right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, and and even you know, up until the time I thought I'm going to write this book, I was in the clinic. I really thought I would retire until well beyond you know 54, 55, whatever I was then. And um, and a family had come in, and their story touched me so. And I thought somebody again. I thought somebody needs to tell these stories. And I thought, no, I need to write a book. And suddenly, like the idea. By the time I'm driving home from work, I had a plan in mind and, you know, I, wow, I, well, I better take a photography class, better at least do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never written a book. I don't know what made me think I could write a book or do any of that. It's a good oh, thing I didn't goodness. know all that went into that. Or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just like on this. I felt like the Blues Brothers. I'm on a mission from God, and that's like all there is. And it just was like such an epiphany, and which was not really in character for me. Were you singing Heidi, Heidi, Heidi? Yeah, <laughs> I was seeing it in my head. I feel driven like that. Like uh, I just have to do this, and I don't know what it's going to take, but I know pieces are going to fall into place, and it's going to happen. And I. And as I transitioned, you know, through, cause it took a while, I transitioned from one world of the clinical world to the other. And there was a big blend in there. I thought, I don't know if I've ever been happier in what I'm doing every day 
that That's I'm so awesome. excited to get up and do. And so since another, then, it has been another yeah. one of the many messages is that you know there's always things that we can do, and sometimes we feel caught in our life, but you know, we can follow our heart, follow our passion. And I, I think that's the biggest reward is just feeling happy and satisfied with what you get up and do. Oh every my day. gosh. Yeah. So lucky. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I say it made a huge financial change in my life. <laughs> However, <laughs> right. yeah. I think it extended my life. It's just equality. I hope quantity too, because yeah. it just, um, it's just been a, um, yeah, I just wake up excited. To- That's great. Well, we yeah. thank you for sharing yeah. all yes. of the photos, sharing your story <laughs> here today. But go on Carmen's Instagram, yeah. Doggies for Dementia, or Facebook, or or Twitter, wherever you go, just go. They're so enlightening, and um, it's just so touching. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day yes. to talk with us. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> It's always oh my pleasure. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for another uh, episode of Educational. Of course, you can find us at www.educational.com. We're on all the major podcast platforms: iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Spotify. If we're not on one that you listen to, reach out. Be glad to add it to make it easier for you to listen to us every week. Also. Uh, we're on all the major social media platforms. We probably hang out on Instagram a little more than others. So uh, reach out to us there. We'd love to interact with you. Also, a video of this interview will go up on YouTube when the episode goes live. So go over there and check, uh, check that out, as well as uh, some of our previous guests. Until next time, that's going to do it for us. Take care of yourself and take care of your health. 